Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program Career Mode episode. I know it's been a while, but work has been ramping up again. Actually, I might be making a video about my work in the future. Give you guys a taste of what I do, you know, six to seven days a week. <laughs> but anyway, so I took a couple of contracts, and of course the only contracts I ever take nowadays is ferrying VIPs to their destinations. Because like I said before in another video, it's more fun building transports that can go to places and do things than it is trying to, well, for instance, test out new parts or fly across the freaking biomes to gather weather data. I don't know. I just, I just, it just, it's more fun, you know, when, when somebody says, hey, I want to go here and you'd be like, well, I, I can probably take you there. Buckle up, buttercup. So in one of the contracts, it said that it needed to take some VIP and it was like, don't worry, it's right here on Kerbin. I was like, yay, okay, I can build a plane. Maybe she wants to go to a spot on Kerbin or something. I don't know. So here I was rebuilding one of the planes I made to um, go places fast. And I really like how it came out. It, it looks super cool for the parts available at, for now, you know, at the time. It almost looks like if I slapped a rocket on it, it'd become an SSTO. But I figured, you know what? If we're going to go somewhere on Kerbin, like the contract tricked me into thinking, we're going to go in style, right? <laughs> Wrong. While it said go to... It's, while, while, while the contract said, don't worry, it's right here on Kerbin, sadly it meant in the orbit of Kerbin, or suborbit in this case. So I was like, well, shit. So I took the plane out anyway, because <laughs> I wanted to test it. I was like, yeah, no, you know what, screw it. We'll just fly around and, and revert when we're done. Oh, and also I decided to rebuild the, um, the the rover. We don't have any real rover parts. So basically I built a go-kart with uh, landing gears and a small jet engine. One's on the bottom for reverse, the other one's on top for forward. And of course uh, you got working lights. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's got, you know, it's got four-way blinkers, left blinker, right blinker. It's got... Uh, um, it's got the the reverse lights. It's got uh, forward lights. It, it got high beams. I kind of went all out. It's fun. It was fun. I don't see any practical use for it, but it was fun. Yeah. So now that I knew the contract was actually for a suborbital hop, I decided to grab another one to rescue a Kerbal that was stranded in orbit around Kerbin. I kind of tend to ignore the ones that say, oh, there's a Kerbal stranded around the moon or something. And the reason why I ignore those is because in my mind if you're stranded around the moon if there's not a if there's a, not a space station or a moon colony with transportation capabilities in your vicinity then let's face it <laughs> you're gonna die <clears throat> but anyway, so I tend to ignore those, basically, and write them off as lost in space. But a rescue mission uh, around Kerbin? Oh, hell yeah, we can do that. All right, two contracts. Rescue a Kerbal in uh, in, in orbit and, you know, uh, ferry a VIP. That's fine. However, it's been a while since I've looked at the Trident Star, and this is the second this is the second version or mark two so i figured you know what Let, let's go ahead and revisit this i, I know we've unlocked a, a couple more technologies maybe we can uh, upgrade it a little bit so i replaced the old sputnik probe core with something a little bit more modern made it so the little cargo bay that the batteries and everything are in opens from the top to allow sunlight to come in with our recently newly acquired solar panels gave the craft a little bit more fuel i also put tiny little juno jet engines on it so that it has the means to travel after it re-enters Kerbin because at that point it's like super lightweight because it's you know virtually empty so four Junos is more than enough to carry it it might not even need four I'm, I'm gonna I think I'll go test it I'll I'll test it later on with just two but for now I know that four will give it plenty of power to do maneuvers and everything changed up the wings a little bit gave it a little bit more control changed up the gear settings so it's got more um, safety I guess you could say when it lands just in case the gears bug out and bounce the craft it won't smack its ass on the runway or ground so i put some gears back there to keep that from happening and finally we were ready to test it out with anything that's revamped or new you're gonna have to even if the numbers are right on kerbal space engineer it's kerbal space engineer what the fuck what kind of you know what? i'd play that game <laughs> even though the numbers are right on kerbal engineer redux you still have to figure out the the sweet spot when it comes to the flight plan the numbers on the bottom only work if the flight plan is correspondingly just as good. Being that it's mostly a rocket SSTO, the typical flight plan that I figured out is the best for a rocket SSTO is to travel at 40 degrees 
up to a particular altitude before clicking on prograde and then traveling into space like a normal rocket with gravity turn. I'm almost convinced that a rocket SSTO is a hell of a lot better than a, well, you know, rocket SSTO space plane is a hell of a lot better than an actual rocket SSTO, kind of like something like SpaceX has got going on. Well, they don't have SSTOs, but you know what I mean. A rocket that stands straight up, launches off the launch pad, goes into space, it comes back down. And what I mean by better is that I think it can carry the same amount of payload for less. And I do mean less, both in fuel and money. Not only do you need less thrust because of the fact that the wings do most of the lifting, but because of your flight plan, you're actually gaining more speed with the fuel that you have, which means that you're using less fuel in order to get up to orbital altitudes and speed. And then finally, of course, the whole thing is coming back down to Kerbin and landing. So when you recover it, the only thing you're paying for is the fuel. And I think I did it. I'll have to do it again, but I don't have time right now. But uh, I did a calculation between how much the craft actually costs. In this case, it's like 32,000 uh, Kerbal bucks. And when I launched it and came back and recovered it and calculated how much money I got from recovering it compared to how much money it cost to put it up there, it was only something like 9,000 bucks. So the whole mission only costed like nine, 7,000 Kerbal bucks. Basically, a tank of gas. That's all it costed was a tank of gas. So less thrust, less fuel, less money because you're not throwing away any of the parts. I'm convinced that rocket space plane SSTOs are better for the game, maybe not for reality, but for the game, in early game, before you get jet engines and whatnot, or, you know, uh, rapiers and, you know, uh, you know, all that good stuff. But rocket SSTOs are better than regular, well, rocket SSTO space planes are better than regular rocket SSTOs that launch vertically. I mean, I'll do more research on it, but gosh damn it, I'm, I'm convinced, people. Now, since we had jet engines, I decided to use jet engines to get up to speed a little bit on the runway before taking off. This would save me a little bit more delta V in the long run because I wouldn't be activating the rockets right off the bat to gain speed on the runway before pulling up. Maybe not a whole lot of delta V was saved, but I'm pretty sure a little bit was. And a little bit is better than none. Maybe in the future I'll add more fuel. You know, give it a... Maybe, maybe make it like into the uh, Trident um, cargo version because the Trident cargo vision... Vision? What? Version has a lot of delta V left over once you get into orbit. So I think that design might be a little better. But anyway, after a couple of <laughs> simulational uh, uh, testing trials simulational is that even a word we finally found the flight path that fits this craft to go into orbit once in orbit we found our stranded Kerbal which interestingly enough he was in or stuck inside of a uh, um, aircraft cockpit which is interesting to say the least it's almost like some other company has been trying to build its own space plane hmm competition maybe but that's okay cuz his company left him for dead and and when we rescued him, he joined us. Ha <laughs> ha, eat that. Yes, we are the Superior Incorporation. Join us. We have amazing benefits. Yash. So after saving the Kerbal and uh, letting the VIP see the uh, her, her house from space, we began re-entry procedure. And of course, with the re-entry probe core, it was, it was pretty much a snap. Now, I have mods that uh, are under the, in the description below. And if you see anybody else ask what kind of mods I have, just tell them. It's under the description below. They have to watch the whole video, you know. <laughs> now, I do use CCAN to save some time. So as for the links to where all these mods are, I really couldn't tell you. You can try CurseForge or Space Dock or something like that. But one of the mods that I have that I use a lot is called Trajectories. And while it's not very accurate, it does help. Maybe it's accurate for like a space capsule coming back down to Kerbin. But for a space plane, it doesn't really calculate the lift factor on that sucker. So while it says it's going to come down in one spot, in reality, the, the lift factor of coming back down and hitting the atmosphere and, and gaining altitude and all sort of good stuff, you know, basically turning from a rock into a, a gliding rock, starts to mess with the trajectories a little bit. And so even though it tells you it's going to land in one spot, predict that it's going to land way further up because of the glide factor. So I've got it now to where I'm, 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 I can almost land at the KSC almost all the time. I just have to sort of aim for a little after the coast of the desert.
disappeared into the ocean. And then when I start coming back down, the red X starts to creep over to the KSC. Sometimes it goes past it, sometimes it doesn't, but that's what the jet engines are for. And after the nice safe landing, everybody was happy. We got our monies and we're good to go. I think the next mission I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to go to Minmus and break that open for science and all that good stuff. And once we get more science, I'm pro probably going to be unlocking more stuff, which means that the rocket SSTOs will slowly not become a thing anymore, which is sad because, you know, I kind of find them fun to build and whatnot. The rocket, you know, SSTOs, but that's okay. This is, this is a, this is a career mode. So technology is going to inevitably get better, but yeah, Minmus. Now, unlike some players that send a capsule to Minmus and back, it takes about a Kerbal month to get there, let alone land and do a bunch of stuff on the surface and then come back. So to be stuck in a capsule all that time is kind of ridiculous. Now I know the game allows that. It doesn't have anything like life support. And I know I can download a mod for life support, but honestly, I just don't have that time or energy to micromanage life support. Because even though, yes, life support deals with food and water and air, there's also the mental happiness part of space travel that seems to be left out in a lot of these mods. In other words, being stuck in a tiny capsule for so long, anybody who's anybody would lose their shh. Yeah. So in going to Minmus, I think we're going to need to build a spaceship, a big one, something nice, something that will start the spaceship revolution. But oh, Vayus, you send a space plane to the moon. I mean, what's up with that? Yeah, it only takes like three hours Kerbal time to get to the moon. So <laughs> they're not hurting. They really aren't. Even with a fully stacked or fully crowded uh, uh, space plane with three Kerbals on it. They're not. It's three hours, right? I mean, I don't know about you guys but i've had eight hour trips in the back of a car before it's, it's fine and, and the best part is in this in this vehicle you can stretch your legs and f or even float around one could imagine there's like a bathroom in the back so it's a three hour tour yeah i had to do that sorry then you land on the moon and you're three hours back Ooh, wow it's a seven eight hour day it's like a typical work day but going to minmus yeah stuck in a tiny little space plane is not gonna work i wouldn't feel right i'm pretty sure they wouldn't either so we're gonna build ourselves a big giant ship in the future. Well, not big giant one. You know what I mean. A nice one for the technology that we have, which isn't much. I don't even think we have docking yet. Ooh, that might be a problem. We might have to, dare I say it, build it on Kerbin and send it up using a three-stage rocket. Oh, the Kermanity. Probably not going to be reusable. Oh, well. Thanks to the space plane and only spending enough fuel to, you know, and only, uh, only spending enough money to refuel the space plane. We're like, I mean, we're like a, a, a million 200 Kerbal Bucks, so we're good. We've been saving money left and right. But anyway, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Up next will be another Starfield video, which, by the way, is actually, um, I'm, I'm seeing better views now. I think it's because of the way I'm, I'm doing them. I'm, I'm, I'm recording them and then uh, talking over them. But yeah, better reviews. Awesome. Not reviews, but you know, better, better views. That's what I'm saying. It's starting to climb up now, so I, I'm seeing that people are more are interested in it, which is cool. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel we also have a membership if you're interested if you become a member you get cool emojis and badges and whatnot next to your name pretty cool check it out love you all stay safe and i'll see you in the next video bye for now bye bye